Hi, how are you? My name is Nam Jun Cho. I'm glad to introduce uh, Professor Harold Lee. This is the, uh, one of the preliminary lectures for Asia Korea Conference on Science and Technology. The title of the whole conference is Human Health and Longevity in the Post COVID 19 Era. And uh, this is the first event in, in Singapore and almost in the globally, we're doing the hybrid conference on and offline right now we have more than 200 people attending through the Zoom and on site and then we have a limited seat for the 50 only but it's packed right now so I'm very glad to uh, introduce the uh, Professor Hewani let me briefly introduce the, uh, his pioneer work and that is related to the today's talk about brain mobility and Asia research network he is currently the emeritus professor in chemistry department at Hanyang University in Seoul. And the most important work is uh, very early year uh, with the Li Ken, he actually found and then he see the, the importance of uh, uh, this research network, which is uh, right now we are connecting with the uh, uh, Zoom and other thing for the on contact. But he identified very early, early year for Global Cooperation Core Asia Research Network for Global Partnership, Asia SNT Innovation Forum, Talent Mobility, East Asia Cooperation in Nanotechnology, and so on. That was 2007. And after that, quickly he found uh, this uh, uh, forum, Science Forum, Science Technology Innovation Forum 2014 and then approved as uh, uh, this uh, government activity and uh, so-called is Asia Research Network. So I want to invite you all, because mm -hmm. this is the Asia Korea Conference on Science and Technology, is basically the founding, uh, uh, the father of this whole network theory. So please welcome Professor Hewon Lee. Uh, welcome Hewon Lee. Thank you very much, Professor Nam Jun Jo. It is really my great honor to be participating in your uh, very great uh, webinar, especially also congratulate your great leadership for opening uh, AKC 2020. Part of that, the track one, I would like to you know, uh, give you a kind of insight of Asian Research Network and the importance of uh, the brain mobility in Asia not only between Korea and Asian country, but also between Korea and uh, many other country in the world. Okay, let me start uh, my uh, presentation. Sharing. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, As Professor good. Namjoon so mentioned, yeah, I am currently Emeritus Professor at Hanyang University after retirement at, just a year ago in Hanyang. And also I have a kind of another dual position as a specially appointed professor at uh, Tokens of Technology. Yes, let me begin uh, my talk in train number one. Okay, today, uh, especially my slide content of following. First thing is because of Asian people, especially ASEAN people it, among uh, audience, ASEAN brief and connectivity, I will briefly talk about. Next, innovation for shaping the bright future. And uh, maybe also about Korea, industrial revolution and for the industrial revolution and some innovations, you know, what we are doing it these days. And uh, the main topic is Asian Research Network, the features, SNT innovation, and hopefully uh, looking forward to having some global partnership with many different institutions and some recommendations. Uh, and these days, because of also this uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation, even AKC, we cannot invite people you know, you know, offline. So many of audience are now online. So this COVID-19 already caused countries around the world to close kind of border. So we cannot go in and out. 
So I wish uh, maybe soon, sometimes next year, uh, COVID-19 is going, going to be away. And then hopefully our researcher, including myself, go to Singapore, you come to Korea or other country like this. So considerable influence by COVID-19 in becoming extremely, extremely you know, critical these days, hopefully safe and health working condition from hosting institution may provide more safe, you know, you know, uh, platform for inviting people. Okay, about the ASEAN community, as you know very well. So ASEAN, 10 country, you know, this is also kind of, uh, not only each country, it is kind of community. So people, including uh, people now in Singapore, you may just, you know, go around in among these uh, Asian communities. Because ASEAN community now is highly connected, not only physically, but among the people. So we have kind of free trade agreement these days. So in case of uh, ASEAN Community Vision 2025, not only we said people's mobility, uh, like a regulatory excellence and uh, seamless logistics, digital innovation, sustainable infrastructure, those are quite important for many people, not only people in ASEAN country, like a tourist from you know, other country, those uh, community vision 2025, it is a one uh, big uh, the, uh, aim for ASEAN countries. So, so, so the, in case of a tourist ASEAN summit in Manila, they have six uh, thematic priorities. Uh, you can look this one. So anyway, for innovation, it is important and also mobility, especially like you, a very talented person in science and technology for developing your country, for, uh, for contributing yourself for you know, your country on the for global, for goodwill, that's very, very uh, important. Uh, let me just take one example from uh, Professor Aizawa, who was the president of Tokens of Technology. I invite him in uh, 2017 in the ASEAN STI Forum. Uh, so his slide indicates also uh, Japanese government, especially like uh, Minister of Education and Sport, we call you know, MEXT, they're also doing great work for collaboration between you know, university and those other institutions, not only from Japan, but also in the global concept. So we are now saying we are sometimes talking about local, but also we are talking about the global. So global local in connectivity viewpoint, it is very, very important issue for all people, including me. For that, once we do have it, maybe by contribution for Asian people, for the world, we can reshape the country and the world with as a bright, you know, as a nice country with a bright future. So uh, depending on country, depending on uh, the policy, sometimes they are saying society 1.0 or society 5.0 based on the Japanese government. So we are already in uh, high connectivity society. So hopefully after 2020, so not only based on the science, but the global view, those are well interconnected to make uh, the better world. So I hope uh, people, uh, you and me and audience and uh, scientists in Singapore and the Korean community in Singapore in the world, they may contribute each other, not only looking for their own interest, but for, for, for the you know, good people for the all. So for that, Sometimes innovation is quite important and necessary. Uh, innovation not only disrupts innovation, but continues. So sustainable innovation should be combined. So then uh, we are you know, living in a society. Uh, uh, so that means uh, the continuous development, sustainability with a certain growth. But uh, we might you know, consider how we can have a more breakthrough innovation in the future. The UN also uh, have a, you know, another knowledge platform we call uh, OK, or not OK, uh, not the OK, which means open and knowledge platform. 
So we are scientists. We are in scientific community, and we are looking for collaboration as a partner. And then we need a collaborative funding from you know different funding resources. And hopefully we may open our knowledge for the goodwill. So that means open knowledge platform is uh, another you know uh, platform for the future. So we are more we have a more response to global challenges for sustainable social economic development. Let me just give you one slide about 17 UN's SDGs. We have a 17 sustainable global goals. So each country, including Asia Research Network in Korea and uh, ASEAN country, in not only ASEAN, European or Americans or whoever, they are working. They are trying to do something to contribute for the UN, especially under the framework of the UN. The 17 SDGs in different, you know, agenda. So uh, we are from a few years ago. We talk about the fourth industrial revolution, but many countries have their scheme about uh, SDG SDGs linked to fourth industrial revolution. Uh, let me just give you a few uh, examples of fourth industrial revolution. Definition I'm not going to say in detail. Already from Davos uh, Forum 2016, uh, there is an official agenda and announcement related to a fourth industrial revolution. These are uh, related to a fourth industrial revolution definition. Not only physical world, cyber world, but now the bio world, humanity including all together becoming more important. That's why now this is next, and not only AI, but healthcare is becoming more and more important. So impact before and after, maybe you can look this way. So in case of a product or manufacturing, normally uh, like a small scale matter, product decay demand, but this, but now, uh, demand create a new product and speed and flexibility matter becoming more critical and uh, mostly will be uh, leading uh, by many other uh, innovative startup and SME. Now, let me talk more about innovation, not only about the world and the Korea. Some of the Bloomberg, uh, every year they announce the ranking of the most innovative country uh, Korea 2018, 17, 16, 15. From my knowledge, Korea summer was selected as the most innovative country based on many parameters. The Singapore also are uh, number six in 2017, the very famous Singapore, Singapore landmark. Korea also this day in an architect viewpoint, another landmark in Seoul. All right, so as I said just in the next previous slide, there are many parameters. In case of 2018 Innovation Index by Bloomberg, Korea again, number one, but there are many you know, parameters. So these are the how they evaluate it. Now, just let me say in different way, innovation. Everybody know Wright Brothers who invented the, the airplane. The airplane, I, I was able to visit Dayton, Ohio, where a Wright brother, he tested like a first, you know, first phase of this uh, wooden base uh, uh, airplane. So he had such inspiration. So inspiration, innovation, it is from your side, from, from also from my view, is quite essential for, for something <clears throat> to be realized. So research, we have to do experiment whether failure or success. And another new idea, something should be implemented. And continuous uh, thinking, continuous innovation, sometimes disruptive innovation can change from their idea, like uh, not only from like uh, here, by foot is like a uh, keep you know, 
uh, pushing to rotate this uh, chain idea from bicycle. Then after that, 1901, but later on, we have a bomb of, like we have another airplane, to finally, we have like a speed sh shuttle. So idea with inspiration becoming, you know, real product. We need a lot of, and we have long experience, long period of time. Okay, let me talk about the Korea. Uh, the many of your audience and also speaker already had experience for coming to Korea, spend many years and the return to your country and devote yourself for your country, sometimes still have a good relations with Korea, not only Korea, but other country too. I was educated in the US after coming back in 1988, about 32 years ago. Then I you know, did something for Korea, for my country. And also I opened my eyes because I was educated a little bit more globally uh, in, you know, in the US from, to, to, from uh, since 1981. So I just opened up globalism and I tried to do something during the last, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I don't know how long I can do, but at least 30 years, more than that. Okay, about coming back to Korea, the innovation, because you came to Korea, you know Korea, what Korea is, now current status, maybe past, maybe future, you know very well. But let me innovation. Innovation, I said, continuous or disruptive. Korea, in terms of manufacturing, so there are the leading uh, uh, manufacturing now is for four leading uh, manufacturing country. First, it was Germany. Second, Japan. And third, Korea. Now, China. So those are, are the countries who has very strength, good strengths about uh, manufacturing. Korea, uh, China, and Germany, they have their own plan. But what about Korea? Uh, and like uh, later, we, we sometimes manufacturing innovation 4.0 from Korean view or Germany view. So look, the Korea's economic growth thermal uh, since 1970 is a key driving force. And the Korea 2015, according to this figure, Korea manufacturing share of GDP almost 30. Now we are 2020. What about in the future? Is this still going on? Well, smart factory, smart industry. Let's look. Uh, 2000, after 2000, present time, as I showed in the previous slide, here 30%, but now maybe by converging ICT, smart industry may expand and also the coverage area becoming more wide. So we are entering from information era to smart era. So. I believe you recognize this kind of changing society. Even COVID-19, we are becoming a citizen. We should live in like a, a new normal. Yes, so which means even one case COVID-19 changed the world, never experienced before. But we are scientists, researchers. And we are one of the citizens for contributing yourself for the country. What I can do as a one citizen for country and for someone else, even for yourself, for your family. So we have to open our eyes how the new era is will be in the future. So, uh, this slide took from previous speaker, uh, Professor Timothy White at NTU, and I invite him 2017 in Asian Estate Forum. Here, uh, like uh, government, academia, industry, kind of uh, convergence or interdisciplinary 
in order to have a new strategy. So they are suggesting this scheme as triple helix puzzle. I, I like this slide very much. So I hope uh, some of our audience or speaker who are representing your country, maybe you may think about what you can do as a scientist who educate very well for your country by looking this on the first slide. I also like mobility connectivity. Yes. Connectivity means it's already linked. You are already linked on this webinar. I was kind of luckily linked in the US when I went to US in 1981. I was also well linked to China, Japan, India, Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam, Europe, many other countries. They last uh, longer than 30 years. Connectivity. Are you one of these? Just the connect the line? Are you as a gate position? Without you, this one cannot pass through. Are you on the line? Are you at the gate? Or some country as a platform? In other words, how? Depending on concept of looking at, sometimes we are on the line, sometimes you are communicate by the gate. Okay, so let's think about for your future. So, great connectivity, super connective society or hyper connective society. So, we still need certain global changes. I hope this presentation may give you certain overview and idea how we can be more well connected in coming new normal era. Now COVID-19 kind of big burden to be isolated. But this one also suggests another way how we can do overcoming these you know, difficulties. In this case, communities and government policymaker and normal people or scientists, they are all we have certain rules. How we can do it? Let's think about for encouragement. Okay, now from now on, let me talk about mobilities. It's the main topic. So far, I introduced about more, you know, global viewpoint about connectivity. We are mostly people who are working in academia. Maybe some audience, maybe from research institution or, or private sector, but mobility, especially we are somehow in that mobility reason for before crossing or re-entering or whatever, we are physically interconnected sometimes, cyber interconnected, physically interconnected means we shake the hand, hugging. That means we can feel really very well. But sometimes virtual mobility like this webinar, but by looking you, by you know, looking me, you may be connected on cyberspace. Let's think about something further. Okay, you came to Korea because of a, you know, some other you know, situation or momentum for coming to Korea or coming to Singapore or after then going back to your country, many cases. There are two uh, great examples in academic mobility. One is Erasmus program for Euro European community. These are 
Erasmus program since 2000, 1987, European Community Action Scheme for the Mobility of University Students. And then Lausanne in Swiss of EPFL. They, this is the, you know, one of the highest populated area for foreign researcher. I've been to there once. Now, because we are in Asian countries, what about Campus Asia programs? So Campus Asia program is comparing to Erasmus program. Now Erasmus program changed from a few years ago becoming Erasmus Plus after Erasmus programs. So combining many other, not only science exchange, like uh, even training, youth and sport. They're all mixed up for uh, European community. Campus Asia case, as I said, is a collective action for mobility program of university student in Asia. This one, this one objective is to establish higher education network among university in Japan, China, and Korea to improve the competitiveness in the international academic market and to uh, nurture the development of future leaders like you, the leaders, global leaders, who can succeed in the global community. This is one example of uh, Campus Asia programs by uh, joining from Tsinghua and Kaist Korea and Tokyo Tech. Yes, in the phase two, second phase, they are expanding. Now they have, I think, more than 24 in the beginning, 2017, more than 24, 25, and many other, you know, Asian country as not only three countries, but Asian country also becoming like a observer or, you know, joining as part of certain countries. Yes. So, just to, to summarize so far, what I told you, what I showed you, this is one example as a, as a scientist, as a researcher who has global view. This is a, maybe science diplomacy. Yes. So this is based on the science and technology for globalization. How we can effectively, you know, connect it and influencing good thing or assisting other nations for creating certain real bridges between two countries among many countries. Okay. Now change the gear, the main topic of Asian Research Network. I'm very happy to uh, talk about or introduce Asian Research Network. As Professor Namjoon already mentioned, officially 2007, 2007 but initiated by myself, representing Korea, and Professor Masai Kara representing Riken in Japan, 2003. So it means already 13 years history we do have. So ARN, so Asia Research Network worked and initiated by Japanese premier institution Riken and the Hanyang University together with other five institutions, we built up the network platform in the beginning because the Japanese institution Riken, as I said, premier institution, and then we agreed the MOU on Asia Research Network between Riken institution and Hanyang. Once again, 
This is my name, Heoni, at the time, 2008. The main platform is Asia Research Network to initiate, to make platform of Asian Research Network from Japan side, the weekend, from Korean side, Hanyang University and Hostel, South Nation University, many others together. So we signed this MOU. Now let's look more, you know, clearly. Now the weekend here, according to this MOU, Asian Research Network, ARN, aims at establishment of a network which we uh, in invigorated research and education collaboration. This is what you did it in Korea and other countries, including Singapore, to solve the problems common to Asian country, including Korea and Japan, such as the decrease in the number of researchers due to the failing birth rate, already Korea birth rate below 1.0. Extremely critical situation and the outflow of excellent research to Europe and America. You came to Korea, thanks. I went to US, yes, it's one example. And I came back. So the first stage of ARN was launched with the participation of Riken, Hanyang University, SNU, Poang University of Science and Tech, ETRI, Electronic Telecommunications Research Institute, CRICT, Korea Research Institute of Chemical Technology, lastly, IPK, Institute Pastor of Korea. The second phase is its expansion. Now, in the first phase of the ARN, the parties have now agreed to open a laboratory collaboration, collaborative laboratory of weekend at Fusion Tech Center at Hanyang University. This is very important, the content of the MOU between Riken and Hanyang representing Korean side for ARN establishment. The Riken is Japan's largest comprehensive research institution, renowned of high quality research in a diverse range of scientific disciplines. And Riken was founded in 19, 1917, already 103 years ago. So the idea came 2003 and for many years, back and forth, back and forth, you know, kind of implementation. So 2008, July 1st, finally, Riken established Riken Hanyang Collaborative Research Center at this new building in Hanyang. Yes, for that many meetings before, this is opening ceremony and uh, from many, including uh, participant institution, but also from India, Arike, uh, later on also India, Korea, I'm sorry, Japan Prime Minister also came 2009, January, he also visited the Arike at Hanyang University. So the concept was following, as even I already mentioned, the content of the MOU, excellent research from not only from Japan and Korea, from Asia, also US, Europe country, European country, and also providing, you know, scholarship or funding in that platform for, you know, research and also new culture for R&D in Asia. What you can expect? Yes. The strategic, strategic, you know, a strategic Asian R&D network and 
also like you what you experience in Korea, many other countries, including me in the US, like a securing, securing talented researcher or research uh, development, sometimes translation together in science and the emerging technology convergence areas, which means we are creating borderless, you know, framework and management. So we were expecting already connective society. Why? Because we were educated globally. We learned from advanced country. Then after then, combining, emerging with our own idea, own instinct, own, you know, knowledge, and also passion, many other things. So hopefully, people from different world, especially in Asia, coming and joining, I can, even I initiate, I cannot do a whole things. We need people together to make a new framework in Asia. Yes, for many years, Professor Nam Jun Jo is the one key partner for ARN. He brought delegate from Singapore, specifically NTU, the president and the executive vice president, and many members to Korea. And also from Japan, from other country, we organized some of them. So Professor Nam Jun Jo, first organized ARN summer camp in Singapore NTU. Following that, we are also having and holding this kind of summer camp. This is a one, one, the photo, what this one are listening and what they are thinking about when speaker talk about it. This is a kind of academia's activities, but also ARA organizing Science and Technology Innovation Forum 2014, first time when Korean president host ASEAN summit in Korea. So I was called by the Ministry of Science and Tech to organize this Korea ASEAN Science Forum. So I said, Staff forum. So it is the beginning of idea with ASEAN country in 2014. So delegate from you know ten country and also another uh, ASEAN country including Saudi Arabia. Sixteen country came. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, sorry, fifteen countries. Yes. So not only forum, but also in the second day, we have a round table meeting to discuss what we can do for each country on behalf of ASEAN communities. Here, Professor Masai Kara, he is a founder of ARN together with me, representing Riken. He's, he is now professor at Tokyo Tech in Tokyo. And School of Materials and Chemical Technology. It's me, 2014, six years ago. So in that ESTEL forum, we prepared, by all members together, with, we prepared recommendation. So here, let me just uh, read ESTEL development capacity building. So we will talk about these days. Capacity building. No, maybe when I, not maybe, when I was born, I was a very small guy. When I was in high school, also later, not big open mind guy, but later on, later on, uh, our boundary is expanding and then our capacity is, is you know, being built. In. So, capacity building. Yes. Second, we need uh, some scholarship 
through four what mobilities, funding sources, platform. So prestige scholarship can be incentivized for young ASEAN talented people to come or to across their border as a Asian partner country, you know, delegate. So from my 30 years experience, just presenting not so influential or science paper, just not influential. Of course, that is a base, but human networking, real sometimes. I'm sorry to show drinking photo for especially some of one are drinking, but I'm saying kind of human contact. Without human contact, it's not easy to make a good friends. So maybe human contact, you know, through the means or through personal or group meeting and networking meeting quite also sometimes helpful for knowing each other. In 2014, also we organized STL Forum. And he, he is, he was prime, he was Minister of Science and Technology in Thailand. He kindly came and attended. 2016 Beijing, together with Chinese Academic Sciences, here as a research network logo, ARN co-host this STI forum in 2016 in Beijing. So we are working closely with many different countries. 2017, this is an advisory committee member, Professor Lam, representing NTU, Chief of Staff and Vice President. So he came to Korea many times, yes. And at the time, we also talk about talent mobility, smart factory, hyper-connected society. So hyper-connected society, I already showed you in the first part of my slide. So after, you know, plenary session, we also had round table meeting, how we can discuss about innovation platform and uh, leadership for innovation. And for further Asian STI network and development. All uh, Asian Research Network not only organizing STI forum for policy making and leading, for those I'm representing Nanotech, ARN our members are mostly, not mostly, a lot of, they are working in a science and technology, convergence and science, including the bio and IT. So uh, we, ARN and myself, uh, representing Korean Analytics Society together, we try to, you know, making network, making good platform for trilateral joint cooperation platform. Trilateral means China, Korea, Japan, Japan, China, Korea, Korea, Japan, China. So the pur purpose is to set the framework for establishing close corporate ties in a view to furthering each organization's development and to strengthening the close relationship and advancement of nanoscience and technology globally benefiting Asian society at large. For that, not only a nanofabrication facility utilization, for those promoting R&D program and those working group, again here, collaborative work for collaborative R&D program to be well done, to be launched out. Yes, human network, institutional network also quite important. For that, I organize all these uh, starting from 2014 with an initial idea, 2015, first, firstly, we signed up the MOU among three countries. For that, after that also, we visit his representing Nano Society 
in Japan. I am representing Miano Society in Korea. He, the president of Chinese Academic Sciences, Professor Bai, Chunni Bai, representing not only Miano Science globally for Chinese Academic Sciences. We've been working together. So why I'm showing this? Yes, as I showed you one slide about brothers, you know, uh, Wright brothers, when they thought something for imagination about flying things, same story, networking, not only by someone else, sometimes think continuously, continuous innovation for thinking could be more, you know, globalized, more different. So neuroscience also saying, so if we did that, three country, why not three country can work, even though we have some political conflict. But we are the scientists, we are normal people, no conflict. So why not cross border? European country, EU community, also things people's exchange, crossing border. European country, there was the origin, how it could be one unit. So no, no, why not three country? Yes. So this one, just the 2019, he is the president of China Community Sciences. He is representing China National Nano Center. He is representing Chinese Academy Sciences Global Headquarter, Usuk Chao. Yes. And she's representing TCS, Trilateral Corporation, Corporation Secretariat, on the three countries, Minister of Foreign Affairs. And many people we are talking, and we're talking with a you know, smiling face. So as I said, we are not talking about politics. We are talking about networking and how we can cooperate together. Yes, this is the one example. You can do it because I did it. Yes, young people can learn. So our mission is to, you know, transfer our experience and foster young people and give certain more global view and act globally, think globally, of course. Locally is also quite important, yes. So we did that trilateral, CJK, China, Japan, Korea, trilateral cooperation on nanotech, yes. You can do many things, not only funding, also collaboration with the partnership and many things. Yes. So for China and Japan and Korea, again, I emphasize Talent mobility in Asia. Why not Japan, China, Korea? We work together with Asian country because some of our five to three country, not only population in science and tech and economy wise, somehow we are leading. So why not we work together as a partners and show something good for Asian country? So human connectivity and also hopefully the R&D output may be translated as a you know, commercial product. So business model also might be, we can go forward. Now from now on, I wanna show something else. After staying eight years in America, of course, I visit again. So total nine years stay in America, US. And I, I came to my Korea, 88, so 30 years so far. Japan, China, many other countries I've been visiting, yes. What about India? India is a big kind of 
almost continent. Yes, India. Very big. About 1.3 billion. Yes. So we also organized uh, seven times India Korea joint workshops initiated by two governments. I was a uh, chair for from the second to the seventh consecutively in the joint workshop. This is one example. So been to India. Yes. Yes. Not only as a scientist, but also sometimes as a part of the member for policymakers, I've been to. I also, you know, enjoy, you know, taking photo with the beautiful Indian girls. In Saudi Arabia too, yes. As I said, the connectivity, also friendship. So they are all happy together with me. So he, is, he was Director General or Minister of Education in Saudi Arabia. We visit many institutions, five days together with many Saudi Arabian delegates and some Korean delegates. What about China? Yes, yeah. Nanotech Directors Forum. Yes, I am here, 2017, 2018, and 19. Each every two years I've been to. So 2000, uh, 2019, yes, again. So look, from here, coming down, I don't know why, but that means we are becoming more close and important to guide the nanotech globally, how with other countries. So at the time, yes, just 2019, yes, I was talking about, this is what you saw this slide, it's me, about trilateral joint cooperation. Why is it so important? Yes, I showed the slide and then I took photo, then I'm showing you again. So what I said to them, because we are three countries, not only in Asia, but also somehow influencing globally. Take the spirit of China, Japan, Korea, trilateral energy cooperation. Remember this idea from myself. Yes. So I spent a lot of time for persuading and then joining and then sharing and then working together finally going together for the future. This is kind of a spread. These things also can be spread out to whole ASEAN community through again to India, to Israel, to Europe. So coming back to the issue, talent mobility. So if you think that nanoscience technology, if you think here, science and technology or capacity building instead of nanoscience and technology. Same concept, same wording, yes. And also young talent, yes. I am not young senior, maybe speaker audience are young people, yes. But not only acquiring knowledge, but sharing our knowledge. So I hope this, Global letter platform initiation, who should take the leadership? If one is not enough, many, many, but also not only one, maybe several pillars, not only one level, many levels, levels. So governing or all together. This is the photo 2019. Photo 2017 and joined Hanyang University when I was young. 1997 or 8. Already I got little gray hairs. 
And then 2005, when I was Dean of University Research, like uh, Vice President, yes. At the time I was young, but after spend a lot of time thinking global, I'm becoming like this. And this is a trend how we are aging. So we are also having kind of network with Chinese academic sciences in so we call Alliance of International Science Organization. But I also talk to them, talking, interacting. We are scientists. I'm not talking about the politics, scientists. How we can go together with the many organizations from Singapore or from Korean community, Asian community, Vietnamese community, American community, North America, Brazil, or Australia. Yes, it's not the politics. It's a scientist base, goodwill for good networking, for sharing something for the future. Yes, it's one. this is what I got from Professor Nam Jun Cho. Yes, I was talking about innovation in the beginning. Yeah, you are researching. I hope innovation should be combined and then go on to the next phase. Yes, again, I like also this one. Yes, how NT in Singapore, including N uh, the NUS, they are doing very good. Yes, these are all my things. Bring another one to remember you, to remind you. Yes. So I almost finish. Yes. Yes. So two more slides. Look, ARN has many MOUs. For the example, I took one from India Institute of Technology Madras in Chennai. What about this? Oh, with NTU. Thanks, Professor Nam Jin Jo. Yes, we do have an MOU. Yes, oh, Nam Jin Jo. He was young, 2014 now, but somehow he got little gray hairs like me, Nam Jin Jo. Look, who is this man? Yes, Nam Jin Jo's student who came to US to become his student. So he attended many meeting in Korea. When I was the president of Korean Nanotech Society, I was a chair in Korea 2013. Professor Joshua Jackman, Josh, he came, he made a great presentation. Among the best, best uh, post award, he got grand free. So then, this is one example. He became professor at Songyunggan University in the Department of the, uh, Chemical Engineering. I really would like to, you know, give a good comment on Professor Nam Jin Jo's contribution. Good professors, good students, good networking, and then good human being, passion, continuously building up your capacity, then become someone later. I hope all of you can do all things. Okay, I will finish up by just showing these photos. Yes. So I hope many of you, including me, we become small bridges to be connected, to make a connection to many other you know, friends, institution, country, whatever. Again, I really thank you very much for your great attention. I hope my message hopefully can wake you up a little bit more globally. If you are young enough, yes, go abroad and make global and local things in convergence, like what Professor Nam Jin always concerned about. Thank you very much, very much, Professor Nam Jin Jo and all audience. Thank you. Thank you very much for the great talk. And then, uh, you know, I have a, uh, just a few comments about uh, this inspiration, a talk from the Professor Hewan Lee. 
and then it's, it's just amazing work he did it for last 20 years. The most importantly, this work uh, has been done way before or, or just those inspiration is very, very greatly uh, covered by and now is the time to the supporting the Asia Research Network. That's why the, our effort in, in, in today conference which is very much aligned. The, we have a next talk gonna be the uh, 10 plus people's talk about East Asia, uh, East Asia, East, uh, Southeast Asia, and as well as the India talk and the leading by the uh, guidance of uh, uh, Chair uh, Professor Hewan Lee. Thank you very much. And then I hope you can enjoy the uh, most of the uh, lecture again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Namjinsho. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.